Hello and welcome to the show. We are here on Forza Horizon 3 for another challenge. We have got a rather extreme hill climb. It's going to be a 1v1 knockout tournament style. Got some of the cars on the grid at the moment. The focus is a bit bit keen, giving the Bentley. That, that's I'm, I think that's a slight unfair advantage. Trying to give the <laughs> the Bentley some some help there. Our first race of this. Uh, of this round. Bentley EXP10 against a little of Bath. I mean, it, it's an interesting matchup. Perhaps one of the craziest matchups that we have. And it is underway. Very, very even off towards turn one. The Bentley is going to uh, get the inside and move ahead. The Bath, of course, crazy like white, crazy acceleration has hit the ice and is off in the fence. Very, very nasty ice patch on the inside of that first hairpin. Oh, wait, I forgot the drone can't actually fly properly. Oh, the Abarth is going for a bounce. Somehow it's just about kept that car on the road. The Bentley, you know, it's not as far ahead as you might expect it to be. Still within camera shot. And we've got a little bit of a straight coming up shortly. You would expect the Abarth to be good on that. After all, these cars are in S1 class, which means they've got plenty of power about them. Uh, the Bentley, though, is going to be very, very heavy up here. I have a fairly... Whoa, I don't know what I've crashed into. That. I've crashed my drone. It's fine. We're chasing after a Bentley. Um, yeah, the Bentley, a very, very heavy car in this. Oh, I think we've lost the uh, the Abarth somewhere. The Abarth has lost a lot of time. I think the Abarth, unless there is a huge accident from a uh, certain Bentley, uh, it's just about making it around the corner. I think it's going to be a Bentley through in, uh, in round one here. I like the EXP-10 uh, in, in S1 class. They're a little bit, I say a little bit problematic to build. They're a little bit diffi more difficult. They weigh some 4,000 odd pounds and start off quite high in S1 class. Oh, we're going to end up on the banking. Not quite where you want to be with a uh, car. However, nevertheless, it is doing well. You can carry plenty of speed up this final section, although it is, uh, it is quite rough in places. It's uh, certainly in these conditions when it's a lovely clear day, there are less issues with seeing where you're going if a blizzard hits mid-race. Uh, mid Could be quite difficult as we say that the snow is starting to fall once more. The Bentley will progress to the second round and the bath is... There. <laughs> I mean, if you're not going to win, you might as well go out in style. There we go. The Abarth is going to cross the line a fair way back. Good drive from the uh, from the Bentley. So, on to our second heat, and the Blizzard is now in full effect, although the cars, a little bit more even. There's still, they're still crashing going on, on the start line. This is why we don't do fail race car meets, because it always ends in a crash. We just try to start a race here, and there's still bumps. Anyway... <laughs> Little bit more evenly matched in terms of cars. We have got the Focus Rally Cross vehicle against a Subaru 22B. Of course, the Focus starts off right at the very top of S1 class, so not a huge amount you can do in terms of upgrades as we get underway. But it is putting out 600 horsepower and weighs just two and a half thousand pounds. And it is side by side all the way around the first quarter, still side by side, up towards the icy hairpin. Still, <laughs> still we fit two rally cars. A little bit of a, a little bit of a tandem bump. That was a hip bump from the uh, Impreza right there. The Focus losing a little bit of ground. Thankfully, the drone camera is just about good enough to keep up with the action in the Blizzard. Oh, there's a little bit of payback there from the Focus. A much closer race so far, although the Subaru getting the traction out of that hairpin. And the Focus, I say, is down on, is down on power in comparison to perhaps some of the monsters that will be uh, running in this race. Don't know how much power the Subaru is putting out. The Blizzard is clearing up. Subaru does seem to have the acceleration, the Ford, that little bit better through the corners. And these cars are bloody fast. I'm having a few issues on some of the longer straights keeping up with my uh, with my drone here. Oh, ice patch. Was it an ice patch? Yeah, I think it might have been. Caught out the focus. He just can't find a way past. This isn't the easiest piece of road to uh, get an overtake. While it's wide at most places, there's a lot of snow and a lot of ice to be aware of. The Ford trying to go the long way around, making an interesting line, but he's not going to make anything work out there. He's fast through one corner, but it's put him a long, long way back for the next turn. Will the Subaru get caught out by the ice? Yep, and so does the Ford. They both brush the wall, but they get away with it. 
just about. No harm done, really. No, not really affected the overall gap between them. They're both running wide at exactly the same places. That uh, is keeping the Subaru out there in the lead. Now, we uh, saw that the bumps here can throw cars around. Oh, focus is off. Focus is gone. The Ford is out. <laughs> That is a big, a big drop for the Ford. The Subaru is going to take a victory. Well, technically not between the posts, but well, we'll we'll take it. <laughs> He's gonna go around and make sure. Yeah, but now you now you've taken out our finish line. I think disqualification for the 22B. No. Um, yeah, too much speed. The Ford was pushing too hard. That's a great race. That's a really, really close race between those two. I don't know where the Ford is. The Ford is long gone. We have lost. We have lost a focus. Um, I think it's somewhere down there-ish. That's the dangers of the, uh, the Blizzard Mountain hill climb. Big, big bump catching out the, uh, the focus. Right, on to the next heat. So, on to our third heat. And we're back to having unusual cars. Fox Body Mustang against a Lotus Exige. Yeah, not your normal rally cars. Maybe the Mustang a little bit more. Has anyone rallied a Fox Body Mustang? Possibly. Probably more likely to have rallied that than the Exige. <laughs> it's just a Subaru in the background wanting to get some attention. We are off and underway. It is to an early lead for the Mustang. Mustang probably got ludicrous amounts of power. Whether it's got the control though as we now head into the icy hairpin. The Mustang on the ice sliding wide. The Lotus will take the lead although the Ford might have the acceleration up this next hill. Oh, the Ford is playing it really risky. The Ford's gone. The Ford has rolled over and taken a tree with him and has got beached in a ditch. So <laughs> amazingly, amazingly recovered that quite damn quickly for such a big roll and ended up so far out of position. He has got a lot of work to be doing. I've crashed into a tree. Very difficult to film with a drone at these sorts of speeds with the exceed. Oh, there's a van on the course. Didn't think about cross traffic from the AI, I'm going to be honest. Oh, okay, I, my drone flies so fast up there, it bumped into the floor. The Lotus is uh, leading the way across the bumps. Where is the Mustang? Here it is. It's not completely out of contention just yet. There is a very, very fast run towards the finish line. And the Mustang is catching up a little bit as we now head on to the uh, even slipperier stuff. Is gradually catching his whether he's got enough time uh, to do anything about catching up to the Lotus. Is anyone going to hit the ice? No, much more sensible from the pair of them sticking to the inside. You can go around the outside of it as well. You just really don't want to be caught up in the middle. Because this is where the Mustang does struggle a little bit more with some of these slower speed corners. And there is the horrible bumps that caught out one Ford already. The Lotus is nicely across them. You really want to hug that inside. The Fox body actually wasn't too badly affected by all of that. Although as we round the top of the course, it's not going to have enough time to do anything. The Lotus will claim victory in a cloud of snow. <laughs> a little bit, a bit of a bump between them. The Lotus will progress. A good comeback. A great comeback from the, uh, from the Ford to get that close having had a roll on the course. Now the, the Lotus is going to go and play in some snow. <laughs> yeah, fantastic comeback. However, the Ford's playing in the deep, deep snow over there. Couldn't, uh, couldn't quite uh, get up to the Exige. Well, the snow is falling once more here, kind of without warning this time. It was bright sunshine, and then all of a sudden, it wasn't. It, it, it really, really is, 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 is not uh, anymore. I'm going to park my drone under here, because it is... Uh, <laughs> Much nicer. Lancia Stratos versus Camaro. The Stratos is all-wheel drive. All of the cars, in fact, in this are all-wheel drive. Stratos is uh, already struggling a little bit to keep pace with the Camaro. Stratos very sideways, and that's not really the line you want to take across, across the ice. The uh, Camaro is absolutely running away with this one up here as we round this next hairpin. This is where the Ford managed to roll over. It is... Uh, ooh, very, very sideways from <laughs> very Lancia Stratos esque from the from the Stratos. Incredibly sideways through that turn. I've got to try and catch up though with the Camaro. Hold on, we're going to do some artsy shots. We're going to do some artsy shots. Try and do some artsy shots with this. I haven't got the time to do artsy, artsy, fartsy shots with uh, that one. There goes the uh, Stratos through. Yeah, yeah, you can't really see the the, the 
car ahead. You can barely see the road ahead at the best of times. Uh, around here, the Lancia is as sideways as a Stratos ever is. And somewhere over here, there it is. We found the <laughs> Camaro. I'm doing my own race up the mountain with a drone at the moment. Yeah, there is a, a lack of grip going on in uh, yeah, Lancia in this one that is uh, causing it no end of problems. It's actually not falling as far back as I thought it might do. We can still just about see the uh, the headlights as it rounds the corner. You know, it's not all completely done and dusted from the Camaro. You saw the Focus get uh, bounced off of the course and that sort of thing. I think the Stratos might have hit the ice uh, back there. Whoopsie. Uh, where have we gone? I've lost sight of. There's the car that we're supposed to be following. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it, you can make mistakes, of course, in these conditions at the top of the course. It's much easier to find a blind corner, although when you have this margin of, of a lead, you tend to not push quite that uh, quite that bit as the Camaro is rounding the final corner. It is just a run towards the finish line. The Chevrolet will take victory. And somewhere, I'm half expecting to see a um, very, very sideways Lancia. But Lancia might have... Oh, there it is. It might, might have fallen off. Uh, Lancia is going to... Oh! go for a very very slow speed roll that's what the uh, <laughs> what the bath did yeah a real oh and you hit the rock as well a real lack of uh, any rear grip from the oops sorry, i got confused with my own finish line <laughs> real lack of rear grip from that stratos cost it dearly in that race camaro will move on to the next round the weather certainly does change very very quickly here at blizzard mountain after such a horrendous end to the previous heats. Now we have got almost blue skies here as a Bronco will take on an Audi Quattro. I would imagine a rather cold Bronco is taking on the Quattro. Good start from the Ford however the Audi's cornering ability will put it up into the lead although the Audi's on the ice. Oh there's a <laughs> there's a backwards Audi. That is an amazing recovery from the uh, Quattro. Well done to lose as little time as possible. Actually managed to force the Bronco to go the long way round at uh, that corner. And now we've got a little bit of a little bit of blocking. The Ford's got the acceleration. The Ford must have an absurd amount of power, I would imagine. Probably 1500 horsepower V12 going on in that. Nothing in the way of cornering, but uh, crazy, crazy amounts of power. Takes out the fence. That will allow the Audi, will it? Oh, Audi's found a tractor. That is not what you want to find on the apex of a corner. Not what you want to find at all. After such a good recovery, the Audi has got, I think, a little bit... Although, as I say that, the Bronco got very sideways out of camera shot. If the Bronco can keep itself under control for the remainder of this course, maybe we could have a, a interesting surprise in... <laughs> In the final, although it does look like an absolute handful. That's not turning that corner very well. And there is a Quattro now right back in the fight. Will the Audi be able to find a way past as we run up the hill? There is some ice. Oh, there's a tree or a rock up hit there. There is some ice on the inside of one of these corners. The Bronco's found it. The Bronco is absolutely, absolutely sideways. The snow has come back down once more as we run up the hill. The Quattro is about a little bit of a laggy back past for the Quattro, but we are coming to the straighter part of the course. Don't quite know. A little bit of lag going on for the Quattro. Will the Bronco be able to outrun the Audi towards the finish line? Oh, they're both very wide. They're both falling off the course. I think the Ford might have been a little bit assisted in uh, all of that one. The Ford will get back on. It's a run towards the line, and the Ford is going to take it with the acceleration of valiant effort. A valiant effort indeed from the Quattro to get back. Oh, they're gone. They're, oh, there's the Bronco. The Bronco found a rock. A valiant effort indeed from the Audi to get back in the fight after finding a tractor halfway through there. However, uh, despite despite his best efforts with the... Uh, well, I say his best efforts. Both, you know, such poor visibility, both cars. Uh, rather on the limits of their grip, both ending up off the track. The Bronco will take victory and move on to the uh, semi-finals so as we head into the final heat i am driving an audi rs2 i'm up against an all-wheel drive trophy truck with a harvick paint job going on uh, you may recognize this rs2 it was very very quick at the reservoir trail hopefully it can be quick here at the mountain now we've got to listen for a car horn that will signal the start of the race there it is. We are off and underway. The trophy truck gets a little bit of a better start here. 
I'm expecting him to have, well, certainly similar levels of power to me. I've got 900 horsepower in this Audi. Will I be able to do anything against a trophy truck? He's going to have over 800 horsepower. Don't know what it can do in terms of sort of restrictors, removal. I'm hoping I might have a little bit better handling. Ooh, <laughs> I got very, very crossed up there on my own. Did not mean to go for quite such a, uh, such a dive bomb there. We are pretty evenly matched. The trophy truck has got that little bit more traction getting out of a corner, but I have got a little bit better corner speed. We're going to go side by side past the tractor that sealed the fate of the Audis around the outside for me. <laughs> oh, we're going to both be on the brakes up here. This is a phenomenal round so far. Side by side we go. I'm going to climb over the back of the truck. It's not, it's not good when trophy trucks land on the back of each other when they're racing, let alone when you've got an Audi estate landing on the back of it. It's not uh, not particularly helpful. Up towards the wooden gate posts we go. It is a big dive from the RS2. We pull it off, though. I've got the brakes, but I don't have the traction to quite fight with the truck. Still we go side by side. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought we were going to end up having to go me on the outside, him on the inside. Either way, it has worked out okay for both of us. We both avoid the ice. A little bit of a, well, I say a little bit of a nudge. I was flying through the air towards a trophy truck. I don't quite have the grip to make that one work. Up this part now, I've seen how vicious the bumps can be through here. We saw what happened to the Focus Rally Cross car. The snow has started falling once more. I've got lots of understeer around that penultimate corner. The trophy truck's got more. Trophy truck's gone. He is out of it, rolled it towards... That's the third car that's rolled it on that uh, section. Oh, that was a bloody good heat. I'm glad I was in that heat. That was fantastic fun. The uh, Audi will move on to the next round, but a well-deserved battle there from the <laughs> trophy truck. Oh, just about got it done in time before the, uh, before the snow, snow started falling once more. Well... I don't know how I'm going to fare in later rounds, but at least I've had one good race. So, here is our semi-finals. The Bentley EXP10 against Subaru 22B. Lotus Exige takes on the Camaro. And I have the crazy, crazy Bronco. I think I've got the easiest of the lot, to be honest. The Bronco is silly fast in a straight line. But controllable, it is not. Bentley against Subaru should be an interesting one. The Subaru is off the line a little bit better and will lead into turn one just about. Gave the Bentley a little bit of a squeeze. Bentley fought back, although has run very wide. Subaru is through the ice and almost takes him out. Well, <laughs> the Bentley got a bit of a free kick in all of that. Uh, the Subaru should really have retaken the lead and they're taking out the speed cameras once more. Bentley very, very sideways, a little bit too sideways has allowed the 22B back into contention. A little bit of bumping with what I would imagine is an incredibly valuable, if not near priceless, Bentley concept car, but never mind. As we slide our way from both cars through the next corner, Subaru thinks we can't quite get up the inside there. Oh, we've been tracked again. It's that... Uh, it's basically just goading your opponent into trying to take that fractionally tighter line and... Yep. When you when you find that tractor, it is uh, not going to be an easy comeback. Now, we saw the Quattro do a really good job earlier on of trying to bring a comeback, but I don't think... I don't think... Uh, oh, I don't know, we're fine. I thought the Bentley might have uh, been about to miss the turn, but he made it okay. I don't think the Subaru is going to be able to really do too much here. The, uh, the XP10, I know, is a pretty damn good car. It's one of my... Uh, sort of rally vehicles of choice, even with ploughing straight across the snow there. The uh, Bentley has no problems getting turned. I think I think the um, the final, my, my, my current bet for the final, I think we're going to see Bentley versus Camaro versus my Audi. Uh, I think the Bronco is just too wild and uncontrollable, and the Camaro was looking very, very fast in its heat, but how it will fare up against a little bit tougher competition, uh, we will have to wait and see. The Bentley is going to take a relatively easy. It, it was it was close for uh, for half distance. The tractor has claimed another victim. We've had three cars roll. We've had two cars tractor. The Subaru will uh, finish not too far behind. I think it could have been quite close had he uh, not ended up. Just tried to dive to the inside, and there was absolutely no room for for that one there. Yeah, Bentley moves on to the final. 
So it is on to the second of our semi-finals. The Camaro will take on the Lotus Exige. Who will be the other car to join the Bentley in our final? There's a focus doing some donuts in the background. And the snow is starting to fall. Are we going to see a full-on blizzard before we get to the end of the race? Camaro gets the best start of the two, although Lotus of course going to be that little bit quicker when it comes through the turns both wisely avoiding the ice lotus wants to dive down to the inside can't there's only really one line through that section indeed i think the snow is going to come down that lovely blue sky we saw 30 seconds ago that's long gone that is long gone indeed the camaro though can't get around the hairpin a big slide from the chevrolet will put the lotus up into the lead can the lotus get far enough ahead through the twisty sections that when it comes to the uh, rather long back straights he will be clear Camaro muscled his way past a little bit on the inside but is struggling through the next corner you don't want to end up in those trees but they are not destructible I found out in practice I did definitely bin the Audi in one of them the Lotus is keeping up though with the Chevrolet and the Camaro gets a big big bounce Lotus is to the inside almost takes the lead Camaro is going to fight back again we have another side by side for large parts of the run up the mountain Camaro able to pull away under acceleration but can't maintain that corner speed is way way out wide on the snowbank still I got the power to get away with it as we cut through the next corner Camaro's got a little bit lost out wide just can't turn both of them dive to the inside of that uh, course Camaro a long way to the inside of the post but you end up taking such a tight line and it's such a hilly one over there that that's not actually an advantage as the Exige will uh, try to extend its lead this is where the Camaro could potentially be quite fast and the Chevy goes for the inside the Lotus can't quite hold it there's one more quarter to go Camaro is going to take it a fantastic move on the penultimate corner as we run towards the line Chevy will take victory that was a great battle it was also an incredible overtake get the car stopped and turned through there the Exige is going to park it in a snowdrift up there that was a close that was a close battle the Camaro will move on to the final and looks like the snow might be clearing up please don't let me have a blizzardy blizzardy heat thank you game I appreciate it so for the final place in our hill climb championship my Audi takes on at the Ford Bronco the crazy crazy fast in a straight line Bronco I think if I don't do anything stupid don't crash into a tractor I'm just waiting for the horn I don't want to miss it there we go I'm not gonna not get as good a start as the Ford however <laughs> you don't want to be too far back provided I don't think really really stupid on this I think I should have the measure of the Bronco I think it's just too wild and out of control already it has uh, gone visiting the uh, outside fence I can't quite see where it uh, it is it's a uh, quite a long way back provided I can stay out of range by the time we get to that final straight we should be good oh, there's, there is there's, there's completely unsighted ice through that uh, through that hairpin most of the ice on this game they'll have it, it'll be coned off however on that part there is no there is no no cones to tell you that there is uh, ice along the inside and as you go to turn in there is just absolutely no grip that's why i've seen quite a few cars running wide through that part we are well i can't even see the uh, oh, <laughs> can't even see the bronco anymore the crazy powerful car it is not so far behind that if i make a big mistake he will still be there i can't afford to uh, take too many liberties but also i don't need to take a, a huge risk having said that i've run very wide that is not the line at all i can't see a thing at the moment there is just the bronco is actually flying at the moment as well I'm a little bit concerned <laughs> i say that i probably shouldn't be however i did just see a flash of headlights in my rear view mirror and uh, that started uh, worrying me again oh god there's nothing i I've <laughs> feel sorry for the bronco that's probably got even worse visibility than me down here i am perfectly okay to take this a little bit easy there's no need to do anything too stupid uh, around here just play it nice and safe don't risk rolling the car don't risk throwing it off the course okay, a lot more understeer through there than i thought i would in this 
Uh, we are going to cross the line and book our place in the final. We shall spray snow in every direction. Not that there's not enough of it falling already. Uh, the Bronco, there it is, will cross the line. Whee! <laughs> Crazy, crazy car. Did well, did well to uh, progress into the semi-finals. In the end, just too uncontrollable up this mountain. So the RS2 will join the Bentley EXP10 and a Chevrolet Camaro to be crowned king of the mountain. So here it is, the final. The Bentley that looks slightly like a Mercedes with that paint job. My Audi and a Chevrolet Camaro. Who will win? our hill climb championship listening again for the horn of the quattro any moment now there will be a lot of slight rollback from the bentley so i've got to really concentrate uh, on that one camaro gets a fantastic fantastic start i do not have the speed of that uh, chevrolet but i'm hoping i'm going to have the uh, control to beat him we're <laughs> Me and the Bentley both get caught out on the ice. The Camaro struggling around a little bit for some grip there. I need to find a way past that, uh, past that Bentley. Oh, we're taking a... Um, I will lift off the throttle. I took a little bit of a uh, jump across. I didn't mean to, which ended up getting forced across there with uh, a car on the outside. So, yeah, I will lift and uh, not gain an advantage from that one as I run quite wide. I may have changed up one too many gears. Uh, Camaro has run very wide. Oh, they've both run wide. <laughs> They're both in the trees. I've managed to get myself out of trouble in that one. We were all pushing too hard. All trying to chase down the uh, Camaro and carrying too much speed in the process. And I was the only one that lifted by the looks of it. The snow is starting to come back down again. I can see a Camaro in the rear view mirror. We are going to have to go maximum, maximum effort here. Maximum bravery from the Audi. Take as much quarter speed as we can. I know the Chevy is going to beat me in terms of straight line speed. The Bentley can probably keep up with me through the corners. I've hit the ice. We're very, very sideways in our RS2. The Chevy is right there. I'm going to defend the inside. Make it difficult. Oh, the Camaro's got the Bentley for company. That could help me out massively. Although I've got big, big understeer troubles going on of my own. Carefully does it across these bumps. You don't want to go exploring. The Camaro is pushing his luck on the outside. I've understeered wide a few times around there. The Bentley is coming. Who has got the straight line speed? It's going to be the Audi. The RS2 will take victory at the hill climb. <laughs> what a final that one was. That was a fantastic, fantastic final. <laughs> The trees played a part. The Camaro came fast at the end. Honestly, I think the Bentley saved me in that. The Bentley fighting with the Chevy just slowed the Camaro down enough that it would uh, allow me to get free a little bit. The Bentley then gave me a hell of a scare towards that finish line. However, the RS2. I, I did make a couple of mistakes running wide. Just a bit more understeer in this than I was expecting. The RS2, she'll do some well-deserved celebratory donuts. And I think for the first time in one of these knockout tournaments, I have actually taken a victory. So, you want a crazy S1-class hill climb car? The Audi RS2 is the vehicle to go for. If our, our racing is anything to go by. However, that is going to be it. There's just a rolling car in the background. That sums us up very well. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.